So uh, we'll again break for a, a session of activity. But before that, I would like to ex expand on one aspect that Sachin uh, mentioned. Now, when you do this first pass reading and the uh, uh, second pass reading, you you would need to write down quickly what the basic question was and what is the hypothesis that they have found, what is the answer they have found. Hypothesis is basically an answer in this thing. Okay? So what is it that they have found? What is it they started to find and what is it that they have found? Now there is a nice way to structure the question and answer and I am going to give you a little bit a programmatic approach that if you follow this template you can quickly get to it. So that is what we will be stressing in this lecture. So basically there is a structure to the question and the answer. Okay. So basically you need a question and an answer it should be a clearly stated interrogative statement and the answer should match the question. So this is a structure of a question. Okay. A question has got three components, topic, the area of work, the exact statement of the question, who, what, where, when, which I said a little bit, and a significance. So the question, the structure is these three parts. So when I, when we say first that, tell me what you did. So at that time, you should come up with one sentence which covers all three. Again, similarly, we will come up with another sentence which comes up with three things which will be the answer. So let us first look at the question. So I have, uh, this is taken from that book by Booth. So this is a nice template that you can use to write down your question. So this template is structured as a fill in the blanks. Now when you read a paper, we will give you papers to read now and try to formulate a question. You read, as he said, just the title, introduction, conclusion and you should be able to formulate. Just the question you can usually get it only in title, abstract and introduction. You can easily get the question what they have solved, provided they have written it nicely. So which also comes to you that when you write it, right, as Sachin said, when you write it, unless you convey all these things, the question and answer clearly in the abstract or in the introduction, the people who read your paper will judge that you have written it in a very frivolous way. Okay? It's not necessarily a research paper in any technical report unless some of you might call it an executive summary. right? Even in the executive summary, unless you don't clearly mention what is it that you wanted to find out and what is it that you found out. That has to come out clearly in as few sentences as possible. Unless it is clear to ourselves, we can't convey it to others. Okay? So this is one way to crystallize those thoughts. Of course, you can. You don't need to follow this always, but once you have crystallized your thoughts in this manner, you can use your creativity to explain it and write it in another way. Okay. So, the topic: the authors have studied some topic, some area that you are saying you have read a paper and you are summarizing. The authors have studied a topic which is blank, whatever the topic is, because they wanted to find out. The question, because they wanted to find out why something happens, because they want to find how something happens, when something happens, and so on. Okay? Or because they find out to happen, what happens if this happens, something like that. Okay? It, it should be a question there. And then significance, in order to understand something. So significance is some I, I find uh, at least students finding difficult to find out what is the significance of a problem. It is expected because at that level they do not know what the significance is. An easier way to get find out what the significance of a problem is to ask yourself the question, so what if I do not answer this question? You have a question to answer. Okay? You ask a question against it saying that, what if I don't do this? What will happen? How do I lose? That answer, if you are able to construct the answer to that, that is the significance. Okay? So significance answers, so what? What if I don't do this? 
Okay, so you're telling uh, somebody, like for example, you're from electrical sciences. You go to humanities and say that I'm working on this communication problem or something like that. They don't understand. So what? What should I do with this? How is it going to help me or any other person? So then you will try to re re rewrite your sentence in such a way that they also understand. Similarly, they might be working in some problem in linguistics. They come and tell you. So what? I mean, I don't care. But then they should be able to tell you in a language that we all understand, wh why is it important? So that brings out the significance. So topic, question, significance, three. So I've uh, given an uh, example. So this example is from actual paper uh, taken from Nature, which is a well-known uh, science magazine. So it could be one way to write that is like this. So the authors have studied, underline, Martian landscapes. Mars means Mars, okay, the planet Mars. So they have studied Martian landscapes. So immediately you have placed yourself in the broader context. So as he showed, so you start the, most things starts with a broad, then you narrow down to a problem, answer, and then again implication broad. So as soon as you have star started with the broad topic, Martian landscapes or communication, okay, or you say linguistics, or you say I am uh, worked with fluid flow, something like that, right? So very broad topic which most technically literate people will understand. So this is not necessarily uh, politicians or general public, but let's say it's technically literate, so people who have technical education say at least up to um, 12th standard. Okay. So they should be able to understand these few broad ideas. So that is the topic. So Martian landscapes, fine, topic is done. So because they wanted to find out, what did they want to find out? Because they wanted to find out what some dark markings, so they saw in some surface, we had some surface images. So what some dark markings were? So what is the reason of those dark markings? Okay. Now, why? So what? Who is bothered about studying uh, Martian landscape, some dark markings? So they have to justify. How do they justify that? Because they are interested in looking at some surface chemistry and physics because that is probably related to life on Mars, what will uh, that lead? Those are very broad significance, but immediate significance is they wanted to study the surface chemistry and physics, that's all. Okay, so this is, this much you should be able to get from abstract and introduction, provided the paper is written well. So again, coming to the point, unless you write your paper, you convey these three ideas, not necessarily in this form, but these ideas, these words, unless it goes clearly to your audience, they will not be able to pick it up so slowly, so easily. So it will take time to pick it up and they will just judge, no, this is not a serious work, right? I should not give credit to them. They will judge it in a negative way. So that is topic, question and significance for a question. So there is a breadth. We start with a broad thing and end with a broad thing. Topic, significance. Similarly, answer. Answer again has got three portions. Claim, reason and evidence. Claim is essentially, you started with a question and that question has got a hypothesis. Right? Question and an answer. So answer or a guess or a claim or a hypothesis, whatever you want to call it, that claim or thesis is the exact answer to the question. So you always need to make sure that these both match. What is the question? What is the answer? What is the question? This is the hypothesis. Yeah, so claim is an exact answer to the question. Then reason, 
what is it, what do you mean by a reason why does the author think so okay why would suppose you today morning we did correct so you came up with a guess you came up with a hypothesis why did you think so how did you think so it is there because you knew some literature behind you knew the subject behind that okay based on some work that was already done you think that those principles or those mechanisms or those causative mechanisms can apply here so the reason is essentially something that comes from known literature it's a principle or a mechanism that comes from previously existing literature that is reason so then comes what so we have got hypothesis right and then next is we need a prediction and some test of the prediction okay so usually it is not written as a prediction that we predict that that we predict might come as a future thing but usually that is supported by some evidence so that evidence which they say so i think that this is true because i have also done some experiments which show that this is true so some test which supports your hypothesis is your material evidence either you do some statistical survey like in humanities or you do some experiments or you do some computer simulations all these are material evidences not that it is computer simulation you don't you don't discard it as a, a virtual it's also a virtual experiment so a computer simulation or an actual real experiment or just go and take a, a statistical analysis and then analyze the data within confidence uh, intervals so these are all methods that give us an evidence okay so again three the author claim that this which answers the question is started off with because of some previous knowledge which is based on which what is based on this claim this claim is based on some material evidence that either they have got done themselves or somebody else has done and they have just come up with hypothesis right so these things put together form an answer so as you see you can state the answer in one sentence similarly the questions in one sentence so these two kind of captures the essence of your technical communication so if you are able, so when you when we are at the beginning of uh, reading we try to write this for several papers and then once we are it's it's not easy to do it's not very difficult to do this to begin with but then once you are practice this you will be able to do it for uh, things in few minutes as claimed by keshav and you will also be able to do it for your own work any technical work that you do not necessarily a research project any technical work you should be able to convey this is the question i started so just keep this in mind the question has got topic question significance claim reason evidence okay so i'll come back to this but this book the craft of research is a very wonderful book indian edition is available it's about 500 bucks and this is not necessarily for the natural sciences in fact a lot of examples given in this book are from social sciences and humanities so uh, please do get a copy of this book and it's definitely useful particularly if you are teaching courses in uh, uh, technical communication it's very uh, nice book to uh, there are of course several books in uh, technical with the title technical communication but they don't actually deal with the fundamentals as these books do so they are from uh, chicago uh, press and people who are familiar with at least people from the literature english background would know about the chicago manual of style yes chicago manual of style so this is the same group that uh, came up with the chicago manual of style so it's a very well regarded uh, a uh, piece of work not only in english writing but also in the method of writing so uh, it's a very good book to have
All right, so now what we'll do is um, I'll leave you, leave this uh, slide with this, and we are going to share some um, actual research papers, okay? So because you're all uh, very senior, uh, we thought we could give you research papers. Some of you probably have brought some research papers. If you have brought, you can use that. Otherwise, we have some supply of uh, social sciences, mechanical and electrical papers. Uh, what we'll like you to do, we'll share this paper. Yeah. So I, we would, from, from what was discussed, okay? Uh, Sachin had mentioned certain points you need to write down. You take, I'm going to just give you five minutes, maybe 10 minutes to read a paper. Okay, I'm not, the entire paper is not given. We have given only the uh, introduction and the last page which contains the conclusion. So only two pages, it's, so don't read it, think that it is not continuous. We intentionally give you only the first page and the last, because that is how we need to practice our self reading. So only the first and last pages are given. So read it, I'm just going to give you just 10 minutes and write down as much as possible that is possible in those 10 minutes, okay? Whatever information that you, th you think is important and then we will discuss one by one why if you have missed out certain thing, why it is important, why something is not important, okay? So we will do this. So we'll just take a few questions now and then, yeah. So most of the time, so since morning, we are talking about this hypothesis. But in humanities, we are also using research questions. So do you think that hypothesis and research questions are same or no. these are the different things, uh, different yeah, in research? No. Hypo question is a question. Hypothesis is an answer to the question. Hypothesis, answer. This question, research question, aim, objective, research question, these are all same. What is it that you want to find out? What is it you want to find out? Okay. What is it that you want to find? What is it that you found? Or what is it the authors wanted to find? What is it the authors found? What is it they found is, you can set it as an answer, hypothesis, claim, thesis, these are all equivalent words. It is an answer to a question. Research question is here, hypothesis is here. They are not the same. Nowhere it is the same. Any other questions before we start? Uh, okay, so uh, have you got, all of you got papers? I think, so um, if you have, um, you can share actually for, uh, in fact, I want you to do this in a group activity. Don't do it individually. Please do it in a group. You, yes, two of you can do it as a group. Please do it as a group. See this uh, the paper which I have given to electrical. Okay, so it's not uh, necessarily an electrical engineering problem. It's a control problem. I'm assuming that all of you are familiar with the control systems. Yeah? And deliberately, instead of giving a problem from electrical device, I've given a problem of applying control theory to traffic control. What is traffic control problem? Everyone knows. Okay? So it's a modern traffic control problem being used being solved using a model-based control technique, okay? Online use of a dynamic model for solving traffic control problem. So it's not a, it's not quote unquote electrical engineering, it's control systems problem. So this is your first pass reading, so just take what, whatever notes that you think are important. 
uh, you need not write this uh, question and answer structure now. Just first take the, uh, other than the question and answer, just take down notes. What you would normally do by just quickly going through the paper. Okay, so we'll uh, just take some quick uh, stock of what people have written. What I'll ask you to do is now you can just come forward and just keep that uh, papers down. I just want to know what you were able to note down in this five to ten minutes, right? So can I have some, like what did you write? Just tell me what aspects of the paper that you could write down. Uh, we could um, analyze our answer. We read the paper and uh, we came to the conclusion the reason why uh, coffee stains is. No, no, no. I, I don't want the explanation. See, that yeah. goes into technicalities. Yeah. I, I want you to tell me what, see, as a first pass summary, right? Did you write the title or the author or what did what could you write in no, those five oh, minutes we wrote the capillary flow liquid uh, uh, the stains that are taking place the the, the basically the, the shape of the the concentration of a stain which depends on capillary flow yeah no that goes into the technicalities of the question and hypothesis yeah. i'm not coming to that we just wrote uh, the subject we just wrote down the main subject matter. Just the main subject matter. Yes. That's fine. We'll, we'll come back to that when we come discuss the hypothesis oh, and okay, question. Okay. But I just want to know, in the first pass summary, we need to write down certain things. And uh, I'm just trying to impress upon you why we need to write certain things. Yes, please. One minute. I'll just pass the mic. Sir, around. we looked into the thought process where anthropological studies, this particular paper, talks about anthropological no, 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 study. No, no, no. Wait, one sec, one sec. I'll just come back here. I, I want to know, right, given five min 10 minutes, right, and you have, say, 40 papers to study uh, over uh, uh, two days. So you need to quickly write down, read a paper, just write down. You don't even know whether it's important for your work. So what is it that you wrote down as a first pass summary? Yes, one minute, one minute. Sir, in first pass summary, uh, topic is noted it by reading this late uh, end net type of article is noted and then bibliogra bibliographic detail also the nature of work and uh, main question whatever is arises in the uh, is this okay. later is also noted so you you could have like she found time to write apart from the bibliographic information the question right what yes. is the question that is addressed yes sir. okay I'll come back to you uh, maybe you can tell me uh, what bibliographic information you could write down Sir, communicating author. Okay. What else? And uh, authors, their affiliations. Okay. Fine. So, uh, at the back there, please. Uh, from the initial reading, uh, I got a pro basic problem which was discussed in the paper. What is the basic motivation behind this? Uh, what are the possible parameters by which you can measure the performance? From the conclusion with that, we have, these are the two parameters by which you can measure the right. performance. No, can I interrupt? See, I, I want at this moment, of course, we'll come back to that later, okay? Let's come back to the technicalities. I'll, we'll have a, a discussion on the technicalities, okay? Whether are you able to write it in the structure which I said. But the question I'm asking now, like Darshana has said that in this 10 minutes, she, she could write bibliographic information, author name, title, and uh, um, and the question, I just want to know, like Keshav said, claims and Sachin said that it takes 5 to 10 minutes to read the first pass. Don't, don't try to understand anything, not in the first pass. Don't try to question anything, not in the first pass. Just tell me what you would, or maybe if I'll give you another 3 minutes more, okay, I'll just give you another 3 minutes more, I'll come back to you, sir. I'll give you another three minutes more. So just write down the important information that you think should be written. If you can write the question and answer, also fine. But just write down and I'll ask you what you wrote down, right? I'll just give you another three more minutes. We, uh, the paper stated that the design, a, design and simulate a traffic level controller to improve the traffic uh, cogni, uh, uh, conjunction and we improve uh, the 
traffic rate uh, by controlling the various parameter here. Yes. So in this case, design and simulate the traffic level controller, uh, traffic controller basically. Okay. No. See, again, we are going into technicalities. I don't. We will come to the one minute. We are. We'll come to the technicalities later. Now, I just want you to. I'll just take five. Please, madam. Just wait for three more minutes. Write down something about the paper that you think is important, and then we will discuss what you have left out. Okay or if you have covered everything that is important. I, I just want that. Please don't go into analyzing or understanding what it is. Just take three more minutes and write whatever you think is important about the paper. OK, so, so what is it that you wrote down? Uh, first, uh, topic I have written. Yeah. Uh, then I have seen whether uh, there is a relevance in the topic and what the author is trying to, and uh, then uh, questions are being asked, uh, then methodology, application, uh, that, uh, then uh, proofs, it was being supported by proofs. Let, let me restate my question. What is it that you wrote down in uh, notes? You took down notes from what you read. What is it that you wrote? I'm not asking what is written there. Okay, what is it that you could write in this three minutes? That, that's what, uh, three minutes, not that earlier one? Yeah, okay, I mean, basically, okay. if you are given five to ten I was minutes, already done with that, so I was waiting for right, the opportunity. So <laughs> five to ten minutes of whatever time you have given, I don't want you to analyze it now. What did you write down from your analysis? That's what. Analysis is, okay, you do, did you write the, yeah, please tell. Yeah. The topic, then uh, aim. Then questions, five, five questions. What, 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 what is the author is up to? So all the questions you wrote? Yeah. OK, and then? And methodology, what application they have done. OK. Application they have done. Methodology and applications are different. Yeah. Methodology is what they, what procedure they follow to get particular thing. Particular data. Yeah. 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 Did you write what methodology they use? Yeah, a short form. OK, fine. Then proofs, some medical proofs have been uh, supported. Right, and uh, scope. Scope in the, for the future next uh, okay. commerce. That's fine. Anybody else wants to go there? Yes, please. Here I have highlighted about that uh, author's name and uh, the uh, content is that how that reconstruction of Indian popula uh, population history. Uh, the aim of this paper, how they have written and they have di made that uh, differentiate of that uh, 25 diverse group of uh, in India in the okay. genetical di uh, divergence. How it is uh, differ no, from what that? You, what, could, what could you write? That's what huh, that, that part only I'm okay. reading. All right. The differentiate between ANI and ASI. All right. And uh, how that African ancestry is involving in the trading. So uh, you, you wrote level. more of technical part. So uh, yes. We will come back to you later. Now, yeah. I just want to know a little non-technical. Yes, let's have some from this group. Yes, thank you. I don't know, noted down the title of the paper, author's name, his aim, what are his objective for the design? Yes. What are the different issues related to the implementation of the design? Okay. And experimental observations, and from that findings he has got. Okay. Sir, in fact, uh, after reading this paper, I have wrote uh, the area, problem area, and what are the consideration, how it has been addressed, and issues with the implementations. Okay. Okay. So I, yes. I Number noted down yes. uh, the publication, I mean the publisher, who is a publisher. Uh, then I moved to the title. And the title, again, just a few points from the title extracted. And then the authors from which country is noted down. And maybe just, I looked into the only one author. Uh, maybe sometimes if I'm referring from my area, I have to look into the authors. Uh, is it like already if I'm referring a particular area research and these people are in that particular area or not? Maybe I may have to look into that. For, for that, I'll, I just noted down one name from that. Then when uh, it comes to abstract, few catchy words I took from the. From uh, some keywords. Yeah. OK. Yeah. So let me just. Uh, go through what Sachin has presented and try to interpret this in, fr in terms of what you have in front of you, OK? And what is the importance of noting down certain things, OK? Now, 
when we say note down the bibliographic information, okay, I see that not many of you have noted it down. Okay. There are some, but not everybody has noted down the bibliographic. It's very, very important to do that. Okay. Even before going to the details, you need to write down some bibliographic information, which keep in mind what is the importance of the first pass summary. You quickly want to see whether it's relevant or not. Okay. And if it's relevant, you will not do it immediately, but you will come back to it after a week or month of reading all the first pass summaries of 40 papers, maybe 40. So, and then you have to come back. So, when you come back, you need to be able to refer to that paper again. You need to be able to relate to that paper again. So, bibliographic information is important. So, I'll, I'll let you now take one minute and write down what bibliographic information from that paper. You just write down the bibliographic information. And then I'll ask you what you wrote. What bibliographic information is required for you to come back to this later in your second pass and third pass? OK. So anybody wants to tell what bibliographic information you wrote? Name of the author. Name of which author? All the authors? Name of the concerned author. Concerned means what? See. Did you write all the authors or only one author? Uh, no. If, if there are two authors, three authors, multi authors are there, then we can put them. Uh, otherwise, the sing single name is. No, there. what have you written? Uh, here I have written the name of the authors. All the three? Three. Okay, fine. Then. Ne next, book name? Five, okay, five. No, bibliographical thoughts I have given here. Yeah. Then book's name, if we are following that, uh, any of the book we are going to uh, Right. So what is the it. book in your case? Now this, this book is your, uh, uh, the race elements in Bengal, a quantitative study. This. No, 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 no. Oh, you have brought your own paper, is it? Ah, yes. OK, OK. I'm sorry. That's fine. I thought you were uh, using one of the papers that we gave. Then publishing, then page number and the year of publication. Very good. Yes. Thank you. This is uh, regarding capillary flow, that right. paper. I have noted there are 11 authors and almost are closely related with the topic of uh, paper. Yes. And mostly they are recent by then because the 1997 paper yeah. and almost all are 96, 95 of that nature. That's okay. what I wrote. Okay. Yes, there. At, uh, so the one here, 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 here. Just next to you, please. So where is 11 authors here? So only six authors available, and uh, <laughs> okay, okay. I think okay, he is coming back. Written I'll, that I'll for clarify two. Clarify that. Okay, yeah. okay. I'll clarify. Good. Thanks. This paper is particularly, sir. I'm Shankar Kumar from uh, uh, Coimbatore, and uh, the title of uh, no, what have you written down? Just tell. I don't, don't read it out. Just yes, I, I wrote title. I wrote this. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, the author name, first author. Okay. And. Uh, the second thing is uh, the title of the paper. Okay. The third one is uh, the title of the journal. Okay, which is what? Nature. Okay. And uh, the volume number. Okay. And the date of publication. That's all you have taken? Yes. Sir. Okay, fine. Thank you. I'm having issuance of bibliography. We want to write the communication later. So it is not uh, author. It has not been mentioned in this paper uh, exactly who is the communicating author. That's okay. That's okay. We'll come to that. Yeah, there. There is one additional thing that I have written from what uh, Dr. Shankar Kumar said. So I have uh, added the. Yours is uh, which one? This nature. Coffee? The coffee? same one. Capillary flow. Coffee, nature. Huh? Yeah. yeah. What right. else? I have added the page numbers. You added the page number. Excellent. Anybody else here? Yes, please. Uh, we have uh, noted down the bibliography, mm -hmm. the authors, and their. Bibliography uh, means what? The name of the authors and also their uh, affiliation. Yes. Then uh, the type of article, we found it to be a journal article. Right. Nature of work as experimental work. Yes. We have also identified DOI. And then we have uh, roughly able to formulate the problem based on topic, question and significance. So this took how much time for you? Around 
15 20 10, minutes 15 20 minutes excellent okay you also noted down the journal yes journal details the volumes and and the year okay year of publication okay so uh, let me just uh, instead of leaving it free let me just uh, take you through these points now when i meant bibliographic information it is bibliographic information about this paper which is not the bibliography that comes in there that is not called bibliography that is references okay bibliography and reference is a small subtle difference bibliography and ref bibliography means a general body of work suppose a textbook you use and it's not one particular paragraph in a textbook you use the textbook to get a general idea so that is a that you use in a bibliography reference is a particular paper you refer to but the bibliographic information that is written there is not any of these both it is about this paper how do you locate it what is the minimum uh, information that is required to locate a paper publication publication means journal name or the uh, volume uh, name of the book like he has got a title a page or or if it if it is a book then you'll have a chapter page but if it's a journal you just have a volume a name of the journal and then volume and page number and year of publication just these usually journal name volume page number these three are enough to uniquely identify any article just three are required year is not required year is not at all required volume and page number uniquely identifies a particular article in a journal 90 90% of the cases year is required not for identifying but to have a sense of when something was published which came first which came later only for that year is required otherwise it is only to no no the format is there only to give a sense to the readers when it was published my the point i'm trying to make here is for uniquely identifying all you need is name volume page issue number not required date not required okay so the purpose of doing a first pass summary is that you want to come back to it after some time at that time you want to be able to locate it if you uh, lose this paper it is gone okay so that's why you need to un write unique identifiers now the other unique identifier that you can use is the doi number but DOI numbers are good for computers, not for humans. So if you have it electronically written notes, please use the DOI number. But if you are using by hand, you are writing it, some DOI numbers are ridiculously big. They are not for humans, right? So you might make a mistake, making one small uh, digit is wrong, it's gone. But it's, that's why it's always safe to keep volume number and page number of that particular journal. DOI number is very important, particularly if you want to communicate with others. So do write down the, when you take electronic notes, you can cut and paste from one place to another. I'll just tell you about those things shortly. So it is important to keep these things in mind, bibliographic details. Underline the communicating author. Why is it important to underline the communicating author? Are you going to communicate to the author? No. Then why? Yeah? He is the responsible person for the complete paper. So what? <laughs> Main ex who is going to be expertise in that particular area? So what? So why should I write his name? Any correspondent related yeah, to that paper? In future, I wish to, to pursue to research no. in the said topic. I can have a direct one-to-one. -one. I can write emails. Yeah, but emails how many times you have done that? I'm Any done. correspondence related okay. to that paper is going to coming to that particular person. Yeah, that's all there, but there's little more to it. I'm not saying that, I'm just not, I'm just, just uh, pulling you guys. But there's something more to it, yes? Just to check the quality of the paper. How do you check the quality by looking at the Previous name? Research area also. Previous research area also. Whether, whether he has worked in that area earlier also or not. Exactly. So, when you do the second pass, as Sachin said, second pass is a judgmental thing. At first pass, you just underline the author and keep it down. When you go to the second pass, you need to be able to judge. You're going to spend, do you want to spend another 
one hour or three hours reading this paper? Do I trust this group? Do they do experiments in a reproducible way? Or they are doing something just incremental and just making some churning machine? Right? All these things are judgmental. We are humans. So are those people who have written the papers. Right? So you need to be able to judge, make a judgmental call that whether I will read this paper or not. And for that, the communi communicating author gives a sense where are they publishing like 10 papers a week or there is one or two papers which is really worth reading. Okay, so these are to form judgmental opinion. Of course, you can communicate, but hardly we do communicate. Most of the things are available unless there is some data that you don't have, you want to get it from. It's available. Is it on the base of your compression? What compression? We are going to uh, means if we are going to find out the right with the help of the judgment uh, after reading three hours or four hours, so some, simultaneously we are referring. Generally, what happened in our literature paper while we were putting it, some information, so historical based or like these things, if we are going to put it, generally we are referring some of the papers for the comparison study. Yes. Huh. Th th that is also the part of our judgment. No? Correct. Ah, yeah, that part only I know. Yeah, so the once you. Are, you See, the, usually the first author are all people who are transiting. There will be some students who are going from one place to another, maybe postdocs who might be going. But there is little more to the communicating author. Even though you may not communicate to the author, you yeah. know that there is that area of work you can find more and you can pass some judgment. That, that's the reason. Okay, then the next is... Thank you. It's important to write whether it is a letter Original article or review article? So what was your so letter, original article, review article? Original article. In your case, was letter, original article or review article? Letter. In your case? Original. original article. So it's important to... We have a letter actually here. It's a letter. It's a letter. It's a letter. So nature calls the short communications as letters. And uh, although that is nature, but there it's a research article, nature research article, and this is the original article. So a letter is, tells you something which is more important, that something significant has happened in the field that you need to take. It's not very easy to publish letters. So when you publish some letter, it's something that has have wider significance or something that has changed the way people have been looking at things as a milestone. So that's why letters have little more impact than the others, okay? Uh, all right, did you, did you have time to write the keywords? It's important, right? And now let's go into the technical aspect, okay? Now what I want you to do is to structure the question and an answer in this form. So please do this. You could do it in groups. Please do it in groups if possible so that you can quickly correct it. Okay, structure the question like this first. Don't go to the answer now. Just read the abstract and introduction. Don't go to the conclusions. Can you write it like this? Fill in the blanks. You just need to identify a few phrases and fill in the blanks. Please do that. I just want to fill in the blanks, nothing else. Okay, so let's have some questions, please. Who wants to go? You wanted to go first. Yes, please. Authors have studied model-based traffic control system because they wanted to find out the solution for traffic problem in order to have the effective use of existing road network. No, no. What is the question? Exact the question you said? Yes, sir. Because they wanted to find out? Authors have studied... No, no, not that. Just the, because they wanted to find out? They wanted to find out the solution for the traffic problem in order to have the effective use of existing no, no. road so, network. When you state a question... The second fill in the blanks should be a interrogative statement. Why, what, where, when, who, okay? So rewrite that portion. The they wanted to find out why. So just re restate it, restate it. Okay, I'll go one from here. The authors have studied ring stains from liquid drops. Okay. I just said liquids, yeah, colloidal liquid drops. Because they wanted to find out the cause of the ring stains in order to understand the capillary flow mechanisms in such stains. Um, so this, uh, I would state it, so the, the topic could have been a little more simplified. So it's coffee stains or something like that, okay? And the last one uh, should answer a question, so what if they didn't do? 
okay so the if significance what is the significance maybe you can have a oh, so the, uh, the applicability she can Yes, um, the thing is like ring stains, I am reiterating what he's already read. The ring stains in order to understand the capillary flow me mechanism for contact line depositions to print fine lines. Applicability. The uh, applicability of spec for ink jets and that's what I mean we gather from this paper study actually. Okay, so here I want to stress that significance can be usually of two, two types. One is a conceptual significance and one is a practical significance. A conceptual significance is something which helps you understand something else but not necessarily translate to a practical application. Okay? Significance can be of other variety which is directly practical application. For example, traffic flow. Okay? If you solve this problem, probably it is directly related to traffic flow. In this problem that you have got, it's about coffee stains. Okay? The only practical thing you can say is why does, how much uh, does a waiter have to clean uh, this one because of a coffee stain or something. That's all. But it is more of a conceptual significance. So there are significances, like in your case, you have uh, analysis of a population. What is the significance? Can anybody, what is the significance you found? Just the significance alone. Identifying the uh, recessive diseases in the Indian population. It's about nothing in the paper, as you all have read, there's nothing about diseases. It is only in the implication or significance that there is a disease. So that is a significance. In their case, there is only conceptual significance. That if you understand this, it will possibly help in something else. But there is not necessarily a direct physic, direct practical application. Okay, so significances can be of two types. You should realize whether this has got a fundamental significance, conceptual significance, or a direct practical significance. Okay, so I will let you. Um, so you can restate it maybe with uh, to understand the mechanisms of uh, some flow or. In, you could state it in that form, not necessarily practical. You could state it either way. Yes. Yeah, so no, that's right. Perfect. So can I have your full answer, please? Full question. So the authors have studied about the uh, reconstruction of Indian population history because they wanted to find out the descent patterns of genetic variations. Okay. Various. Uh -huh. Okay. And in order to understand the highlight that uh, recessives in these groups okay, and mapping the casual genes. Okay. So sun. what is the precise question they try to answer? They answered several questions, but can I have somebody else? What is the question? Yeah, that's one it's at the back, please. No, you had one, please. I hope you have done together. So what is it that one question they try to answer? General question. That how, how Indians are genetically divergent? Exactly. That's so this is some question, if she explains to people there, will be able to understand, right? How Indians are genetically divergent. What's the basis of genetic right? So that is a very simple way it's stated, although, in fact, they have listed five, five different questions. We don't need to write all five. But this one, as a simple way, you could, anybody in this room will understand this. Okay? Now the answer, when you go to the next one, we should exactly answer this question. Okay, and uh, will do you have one more answer from here? Full question? Yes, there, please. One minute. Uh, the author has studied the traffic control system because they want to find out how the existing road capacity is used more efficiently to improve the network in order to understand the working of model-based traffic control. Now, this in order to understand the way you have stated is a conceptual significance. Right? In order to understand how something works, it is much more related to a conceptual signal, the understanding level significance. But you could, because this is a direct practical thing, you should be able to state it in terms of a practical significance. Right? So, uh, I think we have uh, run out of time. Now, we will be doing a similar exercise in December, but that will be a little more stretched, hmm? where we will actually 
Uh, now again, the answer that you write here, again, we'll give an opportunity for the teachers to write the answer. So when you do it, you make sure that they write an answer. Okay? The author claims that whatever they write there has to exactly correspond to the question they started off with. That should both match. For example, they wrote, is uh, India's population genetically divergent? The answer to that question, what they have found out, what was their claim? Their claim is that, yes, it is divergent. And how they are proving the claim? By prediction, whatever that, that was the hypothesis. And the prediction was, or the, the test was, if it is genetically divergent, then if they do a genetic study of all those genes, then they should get distinct patterns. Okay? So, which is what they are finding. So, you make sure that when, when, you, when we do this exercise in December, your uh, group are able to understand this, they are able to isolate these question and answers uh, uh, differently. And the another point which will come again in here is, which is difficult to get the first time is this reason. Reason is always based on existing literature. Okay? Reason is based on previous knowledge. What from the previous knowledge you are using to come up with this hypothesis? Right? You had an observation, you have a hypothesis. What knowledge from your previous thing that you used to come up with the hypothesis? Right? So they have come up with some hypothesis that we need to be able to see what links that uh, hypothesis to your question which is the answer to the question. And then material evidence. In your case, material evidence was they did some genetic study, whatever the uh, specific methodology I use that you can use, it, but describe just as you describe in few words, it should be just few words, not very long sentences. Now material evidence can also be solution of equations. Okay? Material evidence does not mean material in this sense, but the way a material behaves can be a solu equ solution of equations. If you have an equation and if you solve that equation and that equation gives you something, that is also a material evidence. Or if you run a computer simulation and show that this computer simulation, essentially computer simulation is translation of some equation. So that also is a material evidence. So you should be able to uh, guide your uh, teachers how to distinguish these three, these three concepts of what is a reason and what is a material evidence. Okay? So I have very little time, I can only rush through it, but these lectures will again be available on your, uh, when you um, uh, sign up for the, so I'll just stress one aspect from here, is uh, these are basically some tools, essentially some tools, many of you will know about it. But uh, it's to be complete. I just listed uh, various tools here which you can use to search literature. Okay? And these are all hyperlinked. So if you click on them, you will go to the site. Uh, at IIT, we typically use Scopus. I think uh, most of the colleges also have Scopus because if it comes under AACT, any Scopus, anybody not heard of Scopus? Okay. So, one of these things are a starting place for any search, not necessarily research, but um, in core science, but even in engineering, uh, these three are uh, Scopus, ISI Web, and Engineering Village are very good place to start with. And these are all, of course, there, but uh, uh, not so much well regarded because you don't get a full uh, research there. And here, uh, again, the good place to start is start with review articles, which are specialized journals which publish only review articles, annual review, advances, reviews of something series, and so on. And the searching literature, there are two ways to do it. One is keywords based, one is citation based. Keywords means you just pick up keywords and then go and search by uh, on it. Citation means suppose you are given this paper to start with, or some uh, the article to start with, you go and find out this article in one of these uh, journals, okay, uh, and then 
do a citation based search. I do not have time to demonstrate that. We will do it in the workshop. Uh, this one is to tell you about how literature is organized in a network. Okay. So this is timeline and suppose we are concentrating on this red article. So this red article has listed several articles as part of its references at the end. Okay. So those are these colored articles which came before this, yellow and green. Okay? They came before this article. Now this say this article was published in 2009. After that article was published, these three articles have referred to this article and this article also referred to this article, which was say published in 2015. Okay? There is a particular structure about this. You notice that this particular article has got several citations. What is a citation? A citation is if an article has appeared and somebody other, some other article is citing this article, these are called citations of this article. This article is cited by all these articles, citation. The opposite of that references. These all articles come in the reference list of this article. So these three are the reference list of this. These are all the citations of this. Okay. Now this network of this reference and citations forms a hierarchical tree. They are all related. Like you have uh, in your LinkedIn or social graphs you have friends, friends of friends and so on. Or you have family trees, parents, uh, grandparents, cousins, first cousins, second cousins, nephews, niece, grand nephews and so on. This is also a structure which is related. You can call these as parents of this. You can call these as children of this. They are directly related. Either somebody is citing me they are my children. I am citing somebody else. They are my parents. Okay. Who are these then? Relatives. Okay. <laughs> Not blood relatives. First cousins and second cousins and so on. Because they are related through this grandfather or father, whatever it is. Okay. So if you do keyword based search, you might end up only in one or two references here. But you can do what is called as a citation based search. Okay? Uh, that will allow you to find related references. So this, if you do it in Google, Google only to some extent can get all these things. It doesn't have a full uh, connection. But Opus is a little better in this, that it finds out this connection and you can get many of these related articles by search. So I have just listed out some advantages and disadvantages of uh, keyword based search and citation based search. So if you have nothing to start off with, suppose you do not have this article to start off with and you ask somebody to just do the uh, problem from scratch, you can only give keywords. It is a new problem, nobody has worked before, then keyword is good. But if a relevant article is there, it is better to start with citation because the other advantages. Here, if you give a wrong keyword, no, you cannot find the correct article. Maybe you miss something. But here, it is all related. Uh, the links have already been formed. So e easily you can find other articles there because the chain is known. The ancestry is known. And here, you need a good starting guess of words. But here if you just one article is sufficient, I can discover the remaining in that family. Just with one article, we discover the whole family just by traversing this map. And you do not traverse it yourself, the search engine will do it for you. Okay? So the essential idea is here, somebody has already done the literature survey for you and found the relevant articles. Right? That is what is happening here. But here you need to find out yourself. 
And one important thing to note, there's small difference between this green article and the blue article. What is that? No, of course, about the oldest and latest. So what is something else about the citation? You see that network, this is heavily populated on the head side and this is heavily populated on the tail side. What does it mean? Center and receiver. No. The purple one has taken and that has been cited in all. Yeah, so what does it mean? That is the one that is the second. No, no, sorry. In the search in the purple one is going to be a new one and the better one probably because it's the latest and adapted for many things. Mm. And the green, uh, the green, one green, green is the original one. Green is? Original. Uh, sorry, who was it? Huh? Yeah, green one. is the original that concept started and others they have referred. And when it comes to the last point, there's no more, maybe they have referred the other documents, but no one has referred. Oh, that, uh, is okay. that is okay. That is okay. That's because this point of time is end. Yeah. So there's something more to it. No, it's not that. Is the base one? Green is the base one? Base, not a base. Okay, something like a base, but not a base. Uh, review of literature. It is the original. It is the source. Okay. So let me just put it in. The green one is probably a letter or a short communication, which is kind of a milestone in this area. Okay, that it was, it significantly changed the thoughts. It significantly changed something in this area. Okay, so that is most likely to be cited by many people. Whereas this one is what? It's a review article. It could be a thesis, but in terms of only articles, it's a review article. The whole purpose of it is to look at all the work done in that area and summarize what has been done. Okay, So by just looking at the kind of references that each article has, you can also judge these things. Of course, if you read it, you will know. But these are some things that gives you a little more value when you do this. Okay, So I will stop there. We will uh, come back after a 15-minute break. And there'll be a general overview of this workshop and we'll clarify uh, certain logistical aspects that we have here.